everyone this is julie here and i'd like to welcome you to my very first free yes free pre-recorded youtube webinar for nurse aid instructors guys let me tell you i am so excited to be presenting this webinar and i hope you are just as excited to be here you know as nurse aid instructors we play numerous roles and one of those roles that we play is facilitator now, you will not facilitate your organization's Nurse Aid Training and Competency Evaluation Program, or NATSAP. However, you will facilitate your classroom. One of the reasons I decided to craft this three-part series webinar was due in part to numerous subscriber comments on my first YouTube channel regarding instructors not showing concern for their students' learning path. Keep in mind, how you facilitate your classroom will usually determine how your students will perceive your genuity. As I mentioned in the intro, being a facilitator is one of many roles you will play as a nurse aid instructor. In this presentation, you'll learn the definition of facilitator and become familiar with its role as a nurse aid instructor. According to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a facilitator is someone who facilitates something. This person helps bring about an outcome such as learning, productivity, or communication by providing unobtrusive assistance, guidance, or supervision. In this first presentation, I'm going to talk to you about how you can effectively facilitate productivity in your classroom and for your organization. As a facilitator, you can help your organization's NATSAP and your students achieve certain goals. For your organization, the goal is for you to assist with obtaining 100% first-time student pass rates on their state's nurse aid certification exam. For your students, the goal is to make learning easier for them in preparation for their state's nurse aid certification exam. Now, don't confuse making learning easier for your students with handing them the golden globe on a platinum platter. What I mean by making learning easier for your students is ensuring that your classroom setup and instruction is organized, flawless, engaging. I mean, sitting on the edge of their seats, engaging, hanging on to your every word, engaging.
First, you must understand that you are not facilitating the NATSAP in itself, as I had mentioned earlier. You are facilitating your classroom and your classroom instruction and training. In this three-part series webinar, you will learn how your classroom facilitation aids in the facilitation of your organization's productivity. You know what? I will be the first to tell you that facilitating is no easy task. As a NATSAP instructor, you're not only responsible for securing productive participation from all of your students in the classroom, but also for guiding those students with different personalities and learning styles to achieve a common outcome a 100% first-time pass rate on their state's nurse aid certification exam. The effective instructor performs many functions to obtain this goal. One, making wise choices about the most effective instruction strategies to employ. Two, designing classroom lesson plans to facilitate student learning. And three, making effective use of classroom time. Research has shown that most effective facilitators spend about three to four times as long preparing for a lesson than the amount of time they spend on giving the actual lesson. And I think it's safe for me to say that most of you probably agree with me, especially new instructors. I believe new instructors know this reality best, you know, because they're new to the stage, they're fresh, they're green, particularly if they have no classroom training background. I think it likely that those of us who are experienced teachers, trainers, and instructors could learn a thing or two from novice instructors. And I say this because new instructors have something to prove, not only to their organization or to their program director or to their cohorts, but also to themselves. They're carrying a very heavy weight on their shoulder. Trust me, they are. It's their first time instructing and they have to prove positive that they can handle it, right? So when you think about this, when you think about this, you can only imagine how much time these new instructors spend on instruction preparation, ensuring every T is crossed and all I's are dotted, rehearsing lectures and reviewing PowerPoints over and over and over again, researching subject matters that they're not quite comfortable with or that they feel are a tad bit challenging. Trying to think of strategies and interactive activities they can integrate into their instruction and training. I mean, just a lot of things and everything you can presume that new instructors are backpacking. And as experienced instructors, you're probably looking at this new instructor producing whirlwinds around the classroom before that very first day of training as you ask yourself, why are they spending so much time preparing? Because we, as experienced instructors, we already know everything, right? We already know everything. We've been there, we've done that. Now, all we have to do is just sit on our eggs until they hatch, right? Wrong, 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 wrong. Like I mentioned previously, we can learn a lot from novice instructors. Some experienced instructors tend to stagnate where they're at and with what they have, that they consciously look the other way. Um, they consciously look the other way when advice is offered, but let me tell you, that's a whole different webinar topic, okay? So let me get back on track here.
I'm going to get back on track with facilitating, all right? So as a facilitator of your classroom, it's your job to guide your students and trainees through the learning process, making it easier for them to accomplish the goal at hand. Having a structure and general idea of what direction you're going in will help you do just that. However, as we've all learned in life, nothing ever goes as planned. So you need a plan and a backup plan and possibly a few more plans just in case your initial plan doesn't work. Having options to pull from will provide you with flexibility and it will also allow you to change things up based on your students' needs. It's important for you to know that one of the key elements to effectively facilitate your classroom is organization. Being organized, knowing and understanding the content of your organization's program curriculum, ensuring you disseminate pertinent information from the program syllabus to your students on the first day of and throughout the training cycle, and designing and implementing a stand-up program lesson plan, and daily lesson plans. First, let's distinguish the differences between course curriculum, course syllabus, program lesson plan, and your daily lesson plan. I really want you to focus on your program and daily lesson plans because these two plans, the instructor, you, usually have more control of. These are the two plans that you would usually facilitate. The course or program curriculum refers to the lessons and academic content taught in the Nurse Aid Training and Competency Evaluation Program. Your Nurse Aid's jurisdiction regulates the curriculum for your state. For example, here in the state of Texas, the Texas Health and Human Services regulates the NATSAP curriculum which may be used as a standalone or integrated in your organization's curriculum. According to Wikipedia, a syllabus is an academic document that communicates course information and defines expectations and responsibilities. It is descriptive, unlike the prescriptive or specific curriculum. The syllabus is the single most important instrument of structure in a course. It outlines the goals and objectives of the course, the prerequisites, and grading and evaluation scheme materials to be used, such as textbooks, software, topics to be covered, a schedule, and an instructor bibliography. Your organization usually creates the syllabus for your NASA. All right, so now let's talk about your program lesson plan. Your program lesson plan is your detailed description of the course of instruction or learning trajectory for a lesson. 
Now, it's very important for your organization and program director to understand that you, as the instructor, knows best when it comes to outlining lessons to be taught in your classroom. You, as the instructor, know best how long it will take you to present a topic in any interactivity, excuse me, any interactive activity uh, that you'll want your students to dabble in uh, that, you know, may help them gain a better understanding of the lesson topic. And yes, I'm sure we all know that your state requires a certain amount of time for lecture, lab, and clinical on all training topics. But you have to keep in mind that these are minimum required times. So for example, if your state requires five hours of dementia training, but you think or know that it will take you 10 hours to complete this instruction, then so be it. That's what you should plan in your program and daily lesson plans. If your organization or program director constructs the lesson plans, you should be a participant when it comes or, or when it's being built. And you'll want to think of your lesson plan as a roadmap followed by you to facilitate successful learning of the program objectives. Now, the daily lesson plan um, is developed by you or should be developed by you. And again, if the daily lesson plans are uh, you know, developed by your program director, you will definitely want to uh, participate um, in the construction of these daily lesson plans, right? Because it's going to be you um, implementing or carrying out these uh, daily lesson plans. Now, these lesson plans um, will help you to guide class learning. Uh, some states require instructors to have daily lesson plans while others don't. And with that said, it may be a good idea for you to craft them even if you instruct in a state that does not require them. These daily plans, or, or excuse me, daily lesson plans come in handy. They really do. One, they help you prepare and set up for your lesson. Two, they keep you on track during class time. And three, they are a godsend on days you are out because it gives guidance to the substitute instructor and it allows you to know what was taught during your absence. And four, it truly allows you to think of, to creatively think of how you'll present the lesson, what props that you'll use, if any, of uh, the resources that you will use, how you'll need to set up your classroom for the lesson, and so much more. A daily lesson plan should be completed for each scheduled date of training. And I know y'all are probably saying, oh my gosh, you know, for those of us who, uh, you know, whose training, it, you know, are, you know, four months or longer, that's going to be a lot of work. But you have to think of the end result, okay? You have to think of the end result and you have to think about how it will help you aid in helping you facilitate your classroom. Um, everything is gonna run so much smoother if you have these daily lesson plans and if you implement them, right? Um, but it is best for you to, to complete uh, these lesson, the, these daily lesson plans for each scheduled date of training, it's best to complete them at least one week in advance, right? And on the following slide, um, the following slide is going is is a sample uh, lesson plan uh, which you may use to help facilitate your instructions. Um, I think the I, I think actually I think the very next slide that I have coming up is the actual instructions on how to uh, develop or design uh, the daily lesson plan. And then the following slide is an example of a daily lesson plan, all right? So you may complete the lesson plan according to the uh, those instructions that uh, will be coming up. They will be coming up on this next slide.
Okay, so as I promised you, here is the slide that has the instructions on how to develop uh, a daily lesson plan. <clears throat> and again, you can use these instructions um, just for a guideline, you know, a guideline to uh, when you're developing your own daily lesson plan. Um, so I'm not gonna leave this slide up for too long. So if you wanna screenshot it or take a picture, with your smartphone, uh, you can go ahead and do so, okay? Um, because I am about to advance to the next slide. All right, guys, here it is. Oh, I'm so excited. This is the slide. If you have not yet um, concentrated or focused on any of the previous slides in this webinar, this is the slide that needs your undivided attention, okay? So what you're looking at right now is a general daily lesson plan that you could use as a guideline to craft your own daily lesson plan, okay? So it doesn't have to be the exact layout as what you're looking at now. As a matter of fact, the daily lesson plan that I use has a totally different layout. However, the content is basically, um, is basically still the same, okay? Um, so when you are crafting your lesson plan, you'll want to be definitive when it comes to the lesson objectives, how your students will achieve those objectives, how you, the instructor, or what you, the instructor, will do to ensure that those objectives are being met uh, from that lesson, and how you will evaluate whether or not those objectives were achieved, okay? so. If you're, when you're looking at this lesson plan here on the screen, you know, it's going to have all of your basic information um, in block number one, your program name, uh, the class date, and um, the instructor name or instructors. If there's more uh, than one instructor that will be teaching that lesson, then you'll want to put both instructors' names, okay? And then you're going to have the total hours. So if your class length is, let's say you're teaching a fast track program. Now fast track programs are any programs that, or any program cycles that um, are six weeks in length or less. Okay. So those are your fast track programs. And usually with the fast track programs, your class days are going to be anywhere from six to eight hours, sometimes maybe even four or five hours. Okay. So the amount of time that you are going to be spending on this one lesson, that is where you will put the total hours, okay? So let's, you know, let's just take dementia again, all right? Let's say that your class period is five hours in length, okay? Um, and, or even six hours, let's do six hours in length. And let's say, so that's where you will put the total hours. The amount of theory or lecture that you're going to present um, let's say that it's going to be five hours, okay? And then um, you may want to do some, you know, an hour of interactive activities. So, you know, like such as role play. Um, and so in the lab hours, you could actually have one hour, okay? So the total hours are going to be six hours in length. Um, you know, and then you're, of course, you're going to have to play around with that because, you know, you're going to have to, um, you know, subtract uh, the lunch time that you give to your students and also the break times. Okay. So we're just playing around with this here. Right. And then um, in the uh, block number six, uh, this is when you are going to list the lesson objectives. Okay. And basically the objectives are going to be what you, the instructor, wants your 
want your students to get out of this lesson, okay? Um, and then next are gonna be the resources, you know, whether you're gonna be using your computer or PowerPoint presentation, maybe you're gonna give your students, um, you know, a little quiz or a test um, or whatever you're gonna be doing, right? Um, and if this, you know, this has several different resource types. And if you don't see the resource type here, you can always uh, pencil it in, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me, guys, I'm losing my voice, <clears throat> okay? And then in the next block, um, you have the terms. In the next block, you know, the uh, um, instructors and safety concepts and, you know, opening. And the opening is so important. A lot of instructors don't realize how important the opening of your class lesson is. It is really important um, because this is where um, you will want to tell the students, um, you know, what you're going, what they're going to be doing today. And then also, um, you, this is the time that you can actually um, review what you went over yesterday, right? So it's very, the opening is very important. And usually I like to give about 10 or 15 minutes to the opening. If I don't use the entire 10 or 15 minutes, hey, that's, you know, another five minutes that can go uh, towards my lesson, right? So all of this is uh, pretty much um, approximate, okay? Um, and then you're going to have um, your, uh, you know, block number 12, uh, your actual instruction. Um, and then block number 13, any activity. So remember, if you're going to be doing uh, any type of interactive activity, such as role play, or maybe playing some kind of game, this is where you will put that in there. And then you're closing. Now you're opening um, should mimic your closing, okay? So with your closing, you're basically going to just do a recap of uh, the lesson that you instructed on uh, during that class period. And then let your students know what to look forward to uh, the following day, right? Because now you've opened the door for opportunity for them to take responsibility of their own learning by actually reviewing ahead of time, right? What you're going to uh, go over with them the next day. Um, and then you have the knowledge assessment. Again, how are you going to evaluate your students to ensure that they are, they are understanding the objectives of the lesson, right? And then uh, block number 16, if you give homework, you know, what type of homework um, are you giving? You can list that. And then any special notes, right? And I love the notes uh, part because um, on the, <clears throat> excuse me, on the daily lesson plan that I have, it actually has, um, I think it, instead of notes, uh, no, I think it does say notes. Yeah, it does say notes. I was gonna say it says comments, but I, I believe it does say notes. And I really like this um, section here because you can always write yourself reminders um, if there is something specific that you want to, you know, tell your students within the lesson plan. You can always write yourself a note or if you know that you're going to be out um, a specific day, you can actually write a note for the substitute instructor. OK, so again, um, you want to make sure that your daily lesson plan is definitive. And what, what I mean by definitive, if you were out and, you know, you had a substitute instructor come in to sit in for you, you want to make sure that your lesson plan um, is easily understood by that substitute instructor, okay? So um, just make sure you have your objectives list, uh, listed, um, how your students will achieve those objectives, what you are going to do to ensure that they excuse me, achieve those objectives, and then also how you're going to evaluate them, okay? So that is why your lesson plan, daily lesson plan is so, so important. Um, and even like I said earlier, if your state does not require um, instructors to, um, you know, develop a daily lesson plan, it's, it's really good that, you know, you do. Even if you um, you know, for those states that do not require it, if you don't do it like for every day, at least try it out, 
you know, try it out for a few days um, to see um, if it does make a difference. And I can basically guarantee you that it will make a difference in your instruction. Um, it's going to make it more organized and it's just going to run, you know, your, your daily instruction is going to run more smooth. Okay. All right, so we are going to move on just a little bit. I just want to tell you um, first that, you know, having a daily lesson plan will give your classroom instructions um, structure and organization, creating an easier learning platform for your students and trainees. Uh, the following slide will introduce you to a few questions that you should ask yourself when preparing your daily lesson plan. Okay, so when you are developing or creating your daily lesson plan, um, here's just a few questions that you will want to ask yourself, okay? First, what are the lesson's objectives, okay? Um, and that's really important because you as the instructor, you, you need to know what you are trying to instill in your students, right? And basically that's the objectives, right? Um, and two, um, do your students need any pre-work before the lesson, right? So, you know, are you going to give a, a what do you know quiz before the lesson or are you going to give a, you know, give them vocabulary? That's, uh, you know, basically just, you know, what type of pre-work will your students need, if any, before the lesson? Three, how much time do you have to present the lesson? Again, you know, a lot of times, uh, I'm going to use me, my excuse me, my own class, uh, my own classroom time, for example. I have an hour and a half, okay, an hour and 30 minutes uh, classroom time. Now, if I'm going to lecture on, let's say, infection control for that day, uh, there is no way that I'm going to be able to use the whole uh, or the entire hour and a half, right? Because you have to think about um, the entrance of your students, right? Um, you know, it's probably going to take about five or 10 minutes for all of your students to get in the classroom, to get settled in, um, you know, for them to sign in um, and for you to take attendance, right? Uh, so maybe about 10 minutes, and then you're going to have your opening, right? And your opening, again, um, is basically just, you know, letting them know, you know, if you have any pertinent information that you need to um, inform them of, um, you know, what your uh, the lesson is going to be about uh, today. And then just a quick review of yesterday's lesson. So maybe like about, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes of that, right? So that is already like 30 minutes. Okay, that's already 30 minutes. Um, and then I got to think about my closing, right? I want to leave at least 10 or 15 minutes for my closing. So for the actual time that I'm really going to have um, the opportunity to a lot to the actual lesson is really only going to be about 45 minutes, right? So my class time is an hour and a half um, and 45 minutes of that class time is what I would use um, to actually give the lesson, okay? And again, you know, these are approximations, the times that I'm giving to you, okay? Um, and then number four, uh, what learning materials will you need to achieve the lesson objectives? Um, I, I consult a lot of nurse aid instructors um, and I even sit in, you know, when I'm, uh, you know, welcomed to or invited uh, to sit in on some of, you know, some of the instructors classroom instruction. And what I see a lot of is um, unpreparedness, 
okay? Unpreparedness um, and no organization. If you have materials, you know, if you have handouts um, that you're going to be distributing for the lesson, um, those handouts, you can save a lot of time if those handouts are distributed even before your students get into the classroom, right? Um, if there's information that you need to write up on the board, write all of that on the board before your students come in. Um, because now, um, instead of having only 45 minutes to give your um, lecture, um, you know, now you've got to stop and, you know, take a minute or two to pass out uh, handouts or to set up props or to write something on uh, the whiteboard, right? So if you do have any learning materials that, um, you know, you will need to distribute, do that before the start of your class. Okay, so when should you develop your lesson plan? You know, a lot of instructors question um, about when they should prepare their lesson plan. And lesson plans are usually prepared well in advance of the start of the training cycle. And once you've received the course syllabus from your organization, you should commence preparations of your lesson plan. This is when you may have to do a bit of research to obtain lesson resources to make your instruction complete. For example, if on the first day of training, you're going to instruct on introduction to healthcare agencies, you may want to research the nurse aide's job description for each type of facility or agency and create handouts that will give your students a more descriptive representation of what their resp responsibilities will be at each type of facility. What would even be more engaging to the students is for you to invite a guest speaker who has or is currently working in or with a particular facility or agency. Now, when you are constructing your lesson plan, you'll want to include time for that guest speaker. Another really good example is when you're instructing on fire safety. You could actually reach out to your local fire station and request to have a trained fighter, firefighter, I'm sorry, I got tongue twisted there, have a trained firefighter to conduct a brief presentation and to perform a demonstration on the proper use of a fire extinguisher. Having visualizations and demonstrations of certain topics will increase and sustain student engagement. It will also aid in memory retention for most students. Really, to become and stay an effective facilitator of your classroom, you always have to try to stay ahead of the game. Um, your lesson plan should not be set in stone. Although it's vital for you to follow your lesson plan as much as possible to maintain structure of the training, you should allow yourself some flexibility. There may be times when, especially 
if you are teaching in a school setting, that certain activities pull students away from training, causing the student to miss out on pertinent information. If you use PowerPoint presentations, you could always print out handout slides to your students and distribute them to the class the day before the next lesson or lecture is to take place. Instruct your students that they are responsible for reviewing the handout slides if they are absent from training and responsible for asking questions or for help if needed. So if you're lecturing from a training module, um, you may want to think about assigning students homework to read chapters pertaining to the next day's lecture. And, you know, I am a true believer that students need to take responsibility for their own learning, you know, because as an instructor, we can give our students any and everything that they need and then some to successfully complete the training course. But in the end, it all depends on what that student, what our students take from what we give them, what they do with what we give them, and how they carry it forward, right? And I'm gonna tell y'all, I love pop quizzes. I really do. Because I always tell my students, you know, um, if I assign you homework, I'm probably not going to ask if you did it right? Because um, I can always find out, you know, I have, uh, you know, a lot of evaluation tools that I can use to determine whether or not the student did the homework. You can ask a student all day long if they took the homework, or excuse me, if they did the homework, and they can tell you yes, when in actuality, they didn't, right? And so we want to stay on top. Remember, I said you want to stay ahead of the game in everything that you do, everything that you do. So, um, you know, to gauge your students' learning progress, um, you know, small pop quizzes, five to 10 questions, um, will actually help you determine whether or not they did homework, whether or not they're understanding the information that you're attempting to instill in them. Um, and so pop quizzes, you know, to me are just a really handy evaluation tool. Um, you can set aside the first five or 10 minutes of class time to review what you instructed the day before. This would also be a good time to have several students come to the front of the class to share their reading experience. And this is another nifty tool, right? Evaluation tool or gauge tool that you can use if you do assign students, you know, reading um, a, a reading assignment. Um, have a group of students come forward to discuss what they read um, and also to discuss, uh, you know, what they what they gained from that reading assignment. What do they understand about it, right? Um, so this will alert you, the instructor, as to which students completed their homework assignment, which students did not, which students understand the information, and which students do not. Hey guys, what is up with these quote unquote makeup hours sessions? Really, what's up with those? I mean, don't get me wrong. I give my students the opportunity um, when they have a legitimate reason for missing class to make up hours. However, I do not entitle it makeup hours. To me, that just seems like it's inviting students to be absent or to be tardy. So 
So how I like to or how how I like to entitle them is either mentoring sessions or refresher sessions, right? And so with these um, sessions, they can actually help help to further enhance your students' learning, right? And so you want to be able to offer these sessions, but just don't call it makeup, makeup hour sessions, okay? Um, it will be a good idea for you to um, announce the mentoring or refresher hours schedule day one of training, right? So you already want to have um, these sessions in, in place before day one of training, okay? And then it's also a good idea for you as the instructor to post this schedule somewhere in the classroom where it is visible to all of your students. Now, the mentoring hours should be incremented in hours, right? Um, for instance, if you hold class from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., that's which is two hours in length, you'll also want your mentoring sessions to be two hours in length, right? So this will give your students the opportunity to participate in the uh, full two hours, or maybe, you know, a student um, is only able to participate in 30 minutes or an hour, right? But you want to give them the opportunity to, um, to attend the full amount of time of the mentoring session, okay? And again, if they're not able to, um, you know, allow them to uh, participate in 30 minutes, an hour, 45 minutes, um, or what have you, right? If your class is one hour in length, then your makeup, or excuse me, not makeup, but your mentoring hour session should also be one hour in length. This will allow your students who missed a training day to have enough time to learn the lesson, as did the students who were not absent from your class. Also, because the state requires a, sp a specific amount of theory hours, skills lab hours, and clinical rotation hours, your students will be able to apply their mentoring hours or refresher hours to meet their state's requirements, right? But again, do not title it makeup session hours because again, like I said, to me, that's just inviting. It's, it's an open invitation for your students to be absent or to be tardy. So you want to title these quote unquote makeup hours as mentoring sessions or refresher sessions. Hey everyone, I just want to thank you all so much for tuning in to my very first free webinar series, Facilitating Your Classroom. Um, parts two and parts three will be coming soon, so hold on to your seats and stay tuned. Hey, if you have not yet subscribed to my first YouTube channel, you can always go to www dot youtube dot com slash c slash julie reynolds knapsack consultant if you have any questions or comments please feel free to email me at julie reynolds at knapsack consultant dot com thank you